athletes. Research shows that 45 to 75% of athletes like powerlifters, boxers, and weightlifters use creatine. So what actually happens to your body when you take creatine? Is it safe long term? And what kind of effects can you expect, both the good and the bad? Well, today we're gonna take a journey inside of your body to see exactly what happens after creatine is consumed. And first, you should know that less than 200 years ago, we didn't even know what would happen because it wasn't until 1832 that it was discovered by French scientists that successfully extracted it from beef. It was only then that we started to learn that this molecule is very common and it gets produced by mammals from the amino acids glycine, methionine, and arginine. Specifically, your body primarily produces creatine out of these amino acids in the liver, although it's also synthesized to a lesser extent in the kidneys and pancreas. Research shows that a 70 kilogram or 155 pound man with an average physique naturally has about 120 grams of creatine stored in his body without any supplementation. About 90 to 95% of this creatine is located within his muscle cells, where the creatine can quickly be used to provide benefits for energy production and athletic performance. The other five to 10% of creatine can be found all over the body in other cells and tissues, including the brain. While your body creates about one to two grams of creatine per day on its own, you can also get more creatine from food or supplements. Especially red meat and fish score high in creatine because like I said, 90 to 95% of creatine is found in human muscle. And this is also true for animal muscle. One pound of beef or salmon provides about one to two grams of creatine. And it's estimated that on average, most people get about half of their daily creatine intake from animal meats. Since vegetarians and vegans don't eat meat, they often have lower levels of creatine in their bodies. This is because even though your body does create about one to two grams of creatine per day, on average, your body also releases about two grams of creatine per day in the form of creatinine. So if you don't eat meat products and you don't supplement with creatine, you're unlikely to become deficient, but you can end up with lower levels of creatine in your muscles and circulatory system, and that will have a negative effect on your athletic performance. On the other hand, if you take in a surplus of creatine through supplementation or through food, the most significant impact that it'll have after entering your body will be enhanced energy production. You see, muscle contractions require energy, which comes from the breakdown of adenosine triphosphate, also known as ATP. The amount of ATP found within a muscle is generally so low that it's only enough to generate energy for a fraction of a second. After it generates that energy, it breaks down into ADP, which can't be used for energy. At this point, your body will use a phosphate molecule to recycle this byproduct, ADP, back into ATP so it can be used for energy once again. And that's exactly where creatine comes into play. Most people don't know that creatine is actually turned into creatine phosphate inside your body. Creatine phosphate serves as the phosphate donor for the replenishment of ATP. In other words, creatine provides a buffer against muscle fatigue by assisting with the energy production process. So the step-by-step -step is like this. First, the creatine is ingested either through food or in a supplement form. The creatine is then converted into creatine phosphate and this leads to more creatine phosphate being stored in your muscle tissue. That extra phosphate becomes available for ATP recycling and ultimately leads to muscles being able to produce more energy for longer with less fatigue. It's thanks to this mechanism that creatine is so highly effective at increasing athletic performance and power output. In fact, in a large meta-analysis that included 22 studies on creatine, researchers found that it was able to significantly increase lifting performance. The results showed that the average increase in weightlifting performance was 14% higher in the creatine group than in the placebo group. Other studies on creatine supplementation in relation to athletic performance also demonstrated very impressive results with short-term creatine supplementation leading to improved maximal power, strength, muscle contractions, and sprinting performance. Some of these stats increased by five to 15%, which may not sound like a lot, but top level athletes go through extremely difficult workouts for years to get just a little bit better. So a five to 15% boost from short-term creatine supplementation is actually huge. And you can expect that kind of boost in exercise performance for yourself relatively quickly, especially if you use a loading phase to fill your muscle creatine stores faster. And as those creatine stores fill, not only does the level of creatine phosphate increase, but you also tend to retain more water. This is because when creatine is taken into a muscle cell, it also draws water into that cell. The exact mechanism for how this works 
isn't fully clear yet, but it definitely leads to an increase in water retention within your muscle cells. This is why your body weight is very likely to go up when you take creatine. Your muscles retain more water, which is why you can expect to weigh anywhere from one and a half to three and a half pounds more after a week of creatine loading. While water retention might sound like a bad thing, it's actually beneficial when water is retained within your muscles because it gives your muscles a fuller look, making you appear more muscular. It also actually assists with muscle growth because improved muscle cellular hydration increases the pressure placed against the cell membranes and cytoskeletons found within muscle cells. So your muscle cells perceive this as a threat to their integrity, which can increase anabolic signaling, leading to a more favorable protein turnover rate. Since the prerequisite to muscle growth is a positive protein turnover rate, which is simply when the rate of protein synthesis exceeds the rate of protein breakdown in the body, it becomes clear that increased cellular hydration, or in other words, increased water retention, may be one of the ways that creatine supplementation helps to stimulate muscle growth. Research shows that supplementing with creatine can benefit the muscle cross-section area for a variety of different people, including recreational and elite athletes, sedentary individuals, and even the elderly. And the effects on gaining muscle mass are significant. For example, a six week long strength training study found that men that supplemented with creatine gained on average two more kilograms of muscle than the men that received a placebo. Even though it's difficult to say for sure that this extra muscle growth was directly due to increased cellular hydration, we can say for sure that creatine can definitely help you build more muscle mass.